Today, I'm going to show you how to create an interactive magazine with sidebar menu functionality, scrolling frames, and page navigation, all using Adobe InDesign. Follow along in this lesson and learn how to create a custom motion path animation, set up scrolling frames to articles in a layout, as well as use buttons and forms to add page navigation within the sidebar menu. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. Okay, so the first step is to create the document for the interactive magazine. I'm going to click on new file, make my way to the mobile tab. And the size that we'll be using for this lesson is iPad Pro 12.9 inches. It'll have a landscape orientation and I'm going to set the pages to five. You want to uncheck primary text frame. We won't need that option set for what we're doing today. We're gonna set up our own columns when we create the guides. Everything else looks good. So go ahead and hit create. If I go to my pages panel here, you can see I have all five pages there ready to go. Next step is I wanna create some guides, some columns. So um, when we're designing our interactive magazine, it'll be easier to place the content. So I'm gonna double click on the A parent and go up to a layout create guides. We're not going to need rows for this lesson. You can add rows if, if you'd like, but we're not going to need them. In the columns, go ahead and add eight columns and hit the tab key on your keyboard. Select the preview to see the columns in real time. Now the gutter, we're going to need some more space for the, the column gutters. And in this case, I'm just going to set them to 72 pixels. And you can see that's much more room there in between in the gutter. And we also want to select fit guides to margin. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit OK and double click on page one to get out of the A parent. Because we're adding scrolling frames to this layout, I'd like to add a little bit more space in between the pages on the pasteboard. I'm going to go up to the InDesign drop down, go to preferences and select guides and pasteboard. In the vertical margins here, I'm going to change 72 to about 1,000. This could be adjusted after. And I'm going to click OK. Now, if I scroll down or if I zoom out, you can see there's much more space on the vertical pasteboard. So when we add a vertical scrolling frame, there'll be more space to do so. Before we go any further, I'm going to click on the Layers panel and rename this layer to Main Menu. I'm going to create another layer here and we'll name that page content. So when we're working on the sidebar menu, we'll, we'll actually work off of the main menu layer and then everything else in the layout will add to the page content layer. So let's click back on main menu, click on the rectangle frame tool and create a rectangle that goes over two columns starting at the left edge of the page. And so that's, that will be the size of the sidebar menu. And what I want to do is I'm going to go into my CC libraries here where I have all my, my content for this lesson. Of course, I'll have a link in the description where you can download all the assets to follow along. I do have some colors here, so I'll just give it this color for now. And what I'm going to do as well is pull this off to the side. Hold your shift key when you drag it off. That'll keep it aligned. And I also have some content that I want to go within this frame. I have a series of menu items here that I want to bring into the layout. So I'm going to click on the first one, hold my command key, click the others, drag and drop into the layout. These will go into the sidebar menu. So we'll start with top five sedans and then we'll add pronto features. Then we'll add all new voyage and then the electric car one goes at the very end. I'm going to hold my shift key and click all of them. Make sure that you're aligned to the selection in your um, alignment options up top and then just align the horizontal centers and distribute the horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical centers. So there's um, equal space in between each item. I'm just gonna nudge them down for now. I also want to select the rectangle and all four images 
and align the centers there as well. And then what you could do is just bring it back into the layout to see how it would look once we once we add uh, action to it and animation to it to open and close. We'll do that shortly. I'm gonna bring this back to the edge of the page and now we can start building the icons or the buttons that will trigger to open and close this sidebar menu. I'm gonna zoom in a bit here and again, I'm gonna grab the rectangle frame tool and create a rectangle about that size and the it'll be the same color as the sidebar menu so it'll blend right in and it'll be a tab that kind of hangs off the page. Now with this, what I wanna do is round off the right hand side corners on this frame. I'm gonna click on this yellow square to edit the corners. I'm gonna hold my shift key and drag the top to about 24 pixels. Click on the one on the bottom, hold your shift key and do the same, go to 24 pixels and you can see that the, the corners have been rounded off. I'm gonna hold my um, option key and drag out another copy because we'll need two here. I'm going to click on the rectangle frame tool again and draw out another rectangle that's a little bit longer and narrow. Let's click on the selection tool and round off all the corners so don't hold shift when you're dragging those inwards. I'm going to give uh, a, that a color of light gray. Hold my option key and create two more copies select all of them, hold shift command and drag it down. Let's bring it into this area here. And I think that looks pretty good as a hamburger icon. And the other, uh, the other thing for a close is just create a X. So just drop a text frame and do a capital X and then just bump it up and you can select any typeface that you want. I think I'm gonna go with something like maybe regular display black. So it's something that's really heavy and bold like that. And then I'm just gonna increase the size a bit and drag it into this area here. Um, and let's also make that the same color of that light gray. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group these. So select both the rectangle as well as the close X. Command G, you could also go to object and group. Do the same thing with the hamburger icon. Select all of it, Command G. And in the layers panel, let's go back there. And in the main menu, you can see that they're both called group and group. So let's call this the first one, the open. We'll call it open menu button because that's essentially what it will be. It will be a button to open up the sidebar menu. Let's click on this one here in the layer, layers panel. Let's rename that one to close menu button. And let's move open above it. Let's select both and align them, align the vertical centers and the horizontal centers. And then pick an area where it might make sense. So something like that is fine. And if I zoom out, you could see now, if I, if I turn my guides off, you could see there's the tab that will open this, this sidebar as well. So next we're gonna add the animation and the button actions to both of those icons. Before we go ahead and add the animation, I have to group all of this content together. So select the rectangle and all four button images and command G to group. And if I go to my layers panel, you can see now this is all a group. I have menu item one. Actually, let's call that last one because I've renamed, there we go. Let's call this menu item four. Perfect. So we have all menu items intact and you can see that there's the rectangle there, but I want to rename this group so it makes more sense. And we'll call this main menu group. So essentially the main menu layer that we created at the beginning has the open menu button. I'll turn that off. The close menu button, which is right there, as well as the main menu group. So all of that, perfect. Now we can go ahead and start adding the animation to the rectangle. So I'm gonna open up the animation panel and just tear it off and bring it into the layout. 
If you don't have that open, remember, go to Window, Interactive, Animation. We'll also need buttons and forms for this lesson, so go ahead and open that while you're there. Perfect, so I have animation open. Typically, you would choose a preset to apply to this sidebar for animation, but I'm gonna show you how to create one using the line tool and adding a motion path. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the motion path in the center point of the sidebar, and I'm gonna hold my shift key and just simply draw out a line in the direction that you want this animation to play out. So if I did it the other way around, it would actually animate the other way. So make sure that you start in the sidebar, hold your shift key and just draw out a line there. Now that line is still selected. I'm gonna click on the selection tool, hold my shift key and click the sidebar group. And down below in the animation uh, panel, there's an option to convert to motion path. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. Now you notice that I created that motion path to that first guide. That's the center point of the two columns. So basically the halfway point will land there and it'll fit nicely in that two column. So if, actually before we go any further, you see the event as of now is on page load. That's okay, we'll change that once we add the actions to the buttons. The duration, I want this to play pretty quick when it's opened and it's closed. So 0 0.125, actually let's do 25 first. I think 25 might be good. Um, make sure that there's no opacity applied so we don't want to fade in. We want this to come in and out with a hard transition. Perfect, everything else looks good. And you can see the name here, main menu group. So if I go ahead and play that, you'll see that it will play on page load right now but you could get a sense of how that will come in. And that was a pretty nice transition, right? Perfect. So I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna move this up. I'm gonna move these up just a bit because I found that, that they were a little bit too close. They might be a little bit too big as well. So I'm just gonna shift command and drag both of them. You don't want the buttons to be too daunting in, in size. You don't want them to be huge, right? I think that's a comfortable size there. Um, perfect, so that's good there. Now what I can do is I'm gonna zoom in here and let's work with our layers panel. And because these are stacked, I find it easier to grab them in the layers panel. So let's click on open menu button first and go to the buttons and forms panel. Let's bring that into this, this same window here. Let's convert that object into a button and let's call this open menu button. And the action here will be animation. And you can see that the animation, the only one we have right now is the main menu group. And the option here is to play. So basically when, when I click that, it'll play the animation. So essentially open the animation. Perfect. Let's go back to our layers panel. I'll bring that into the same window so it's easier to work. Let's click on close menu button. Let's hide this open menu. Okay, close menu button, we have that. Just click this little indicator here to, to, have, uh, to select that. Perfect, and now we can go up to buttons and forms, add that as a button as well. And this is close menu button. And the action here is also animation but the option instead of play will be to uh, stop. Okay, perfect. I'm sorry, not stop. We want it to reverse. So basically the open will play, the close will reverse. So open, close, perfect. So now that we have that set up, I can go back to my layers panel and turn that back on. I'm gonna click on this menu sidebar again go to animation and you notice here in the events there's two events so it will still play on page load but we don't want it to because we've created a button event so go ahead and uncheck on page load and if i go in here now there's one other step we have to do but i want to show you how this works for now we'll be able to open it okay now we can't close it because the close button is behind this open button and I'll show you how to get around that now. Go back to the layers panel and let's click open menu button. Now go back to buttons and forms and let's add a secondary action 
of show hide buttons and forms. You can see in the visibility section here, there's one for open menu button and one for close menu button. Now X will ignore any selection. We want to hide open menu when we click that and we want to show, show the close menu button. Let's go ahead and go to layers again. Let's click on close menu button. Let's hide this open for now. Go back to buttons and forms, add a secondary show hide buttons and forms action. And in this case, we want to show the open menu button and hide the close menu button. Now, if I test this out, let's turn on open menu button again. Let's click on the EPUB preview window. You can see there's the tab, it's activated, so I can click it, it will open and close, open and close. And you can see that when I open it, the open button is removed and the show um, close button appears. So that's, that's how you would open and close the sidebar menu. I also have a pattern which I want to add to this sidebar menu. It's an Illustrator file with a vector pattern. I'm just gonna click in that rectangle to drop it in, double click. I also want to rotate this so it's vertical. Shift Option Command C. Go to my Properties panel and multiply that so it blends in. Let me zoom in. And I also want to just change the opacity on that so it's about 25%, which is good. And instead of recreating this for every page in the layout, uh, what you could do is copy and paste it. Now, before I do that, I want to add some page navigation to the menu items. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to double click and then double click again to create a uh, page navigation button for each one of these. So I have the first one selected. I'm going to create that into a button. And this one will be called top five sedans. The action here is to go to page and we want this to go to page two. Um, we can add a rollover to this. So I'm going to click rollover, double click to drive into that. And let's change the opacity to about 90%. So there's a little tint there. You can see just a subtle tint as we hover over. I'm gonna click on the second one, double click until you drive just into the image part and select a button. And this will be called Pronto Features. Hit enter, make sure you hit enter when you write those button names. The action here is go to page and the page here is page three. Perfect, let's move on. Double click, double click. Oh, let's add a rollover here. So double click to drive into that and let's add a rollover, double click, and let's make that 90% and go back to normal. Now we can go to the third one here. Perfect, we can create that into a button as well. This will be called All New Voyage. Let's add a rollover appearance, double click, and make that 90%, go back to normal. Perfect. Oh, we have to add the action, so we can't forget that. So the action here is go to page, and the page here was two, three, this is page four of five. And let's click on the last one, and double keep double clicking until you drive into just the image part, create a button. This is plug and play, and this action is go to page and the page is five of five. Now, I don't think we're gonna be creating all five pages, but it gives you a sense of how the page navigation works. Click rollover, double click, make that 90%, and then go back to normal. And these should all work just fine now. But before we go any further, I also wanna add the logo to this. So let's, this is a fictional uh, company called First Gear. And basically, I want this to be, you see how I have the logo kind of in the middle of the two columns? That's because when this uh, rolls over, it'll be into the center point of, of the sidebar menu. Now, one thing that's important is you want to make sure that first gear is at the very top of this. Otherwise, when you open it, 
um, the sidebar will cover first gear. It'll, it'll go above it. So you want the logo to still appear in the front and just put it somewhere like so, and that's good. So you can actually test that out. Let's go ahead and do that. So there it is, first gear, let's open that up. You can see first gear logo is now in the middle of the sidebar. If I close it, it closes it. And we'll add content to this in just a few moments. Uh, before we go any further, I wanna copy all of this. Okay, Command C, and then just go to the pages and do a Shift Option Command V. That is a paste in place. Also, you can go to edit, paste in place. And so basically, all the navigation buttons will still work, but if I double click on it, you see how it creates a third, a third instance of that button. So it's still top five sedans, it'll still do the same thing. You just don't have to re keep recreating the button. So Shift, Option, Command, V, and I think that's the last page. Now we have one more, perfect. And so we have all of the, uh, the menus, are all on every page. And now we can move on and start adding the content. We'll go through page one, two, and three, and I'll show you how to add scrolling frames. And then we'll publish this online and see how it looks um, in a web browser. So remember, because we're adding the content to the layout now, you wanna make sure that you're working on the page content layer and not the main menu layer. I have a main image that I'm just gonna drag onto the layout. While holding my shift key, I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner and just drag out a frame and there's the image there and click on the rectangle frame tool again and create another frame that stretches from the left hand side to about the second last column. I'm going to give that a color fill. I'm going to go to my properties panel, go to effects and add a gradient feather. I'm going to increase the size or the depth of this gradient feather for now. Something like that is good. Basically, we're gonna be adding some text here so we don't want it to blend in with that busy background of the buildings. I'm just gonna, I've copied some text from a previous layout, Shift, Option, Command, V, and you can see I have the main headline, Travel and Style, introducing the all new Nagato Passage with a little description. I have a Learn More button Again, you can create a navigation button from this, maybe taking you to a sixth page that would have that story. Great, so if I test that out now, let's go to buttons and forms, open the um, EPUB preview window, and let's see how that slider, the sidebar menu looks um, on top of a page with content on it. So let's click on that, you can open it, and that's okay if the, the sidebar covers some of the content, that's okay because you can close it and it reveals the rest of the content, Content, you could see it again. All right, let's add the content to the second page of our layout. I'm gonna click on the type tool and create a text frame that stretches all the way across. This will become our headline. I'm gonna bring in the main image for this page. So I'm gonna just click and drag and drop and this will be um, actually, this will be three columns. So something like that. I'm gonna bring this up for now, something like that. And so our story, our article will go here. I have the article here, so I'm just gonna do Command A and then just drop it in like so. Just pasted it in. If you're bringing in a Word document or any other text, you can go to File, Place and place the Word document in, just like you would an image. I'm gonna zoom in here and scroll down or drag that to make that text frame deeper. I'm just gonna select all this text here, go to my properties panel, and I do have some paragraph styles here, so body text. I have another style here in my libraries for the body text subheader, so I'll just do that. I'll make sure that these are all formatted properly. It's easier when you're adding paragraph styles. Remember we added more depth to the pasteboard. This is why. So I'm just gonna drag that all the way to the bottom, zoom in here, and keep adding these subheader styles to this. Perfect. We got one more here. I'm just gonna drag that down. 
double click the bottom and that's the last line there. But we have all this overset text, right? So and this is handy if you don't have enough space to fit an article on a page. So I'm gonna move that down just a bit because we have um, just another headline here to put in. So the main headline here will be, what are the top sedans for 2022? Let me zoom in. I'm gonna make that main headline. Top sedans, make sure that I spelt that. Okay, 2022. Let's go ahead and just bump that up in size a little bit. And I have the deck headline here, which I'm just gonna copy and paste into here. And I also created a, um, let's see, deck headline right there. Say okay. And I'm just going to double click to make that fit. Let's just add a little bit of more space there. I also have a byline here. Let's just create another text frame. And let's say the name of is Heather uh, Smith. Johnson. Let's select that and I have a byline. Perfect. Double click. Now I created a little border paragraph there. So I'm just going to make sure that that aligns with the guide on the left hand side. And then just make sure that you kind of distribute the space properly. So you have the deck headline, you have the name of the writer, and then right into the story. Now we want to find a good place here where we can add the scrolling frame. So I'm going to move that down a bit, maybe move this byline down just a little bit as well. I like the space now between all the elements. So to add a scrolling frame, we'll be using in five scrolling frame extension and I'll have a link in the description here where you can um, acquire it from the Adobe extensions download site. So I already have one and basically all you have to do is create a container. So I'm going to click on the rectangle frame tool and you want to add the, you want to add both the story and the byline. So make sure that that's grouped actually. I'm going to select both and just do command G and then I'm going to add the container. So go back to your rectangle frame tool and then click drag. And basically you want to, um, you want to add the ending point of where this scrolling frame. So where do you want this, this to stop in terms of appearance? So something like that, or you can go a little bit further down, maybe something like that is fine. I'm just going to add a little bit more space on the right hand side so that you can see the scroll indicator. So something like that is good. Go back to your selection tool, click on the group here, which is the story and the byline command X or edit cut click on the container, right click, and don't paste or paste in place. You want to paste into. So go ahead and do that. And you can see that now if I double click, um, the group is still there, which is great. And it's contained in this container. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go to window universal scrolling frames. It's also found in the in five dropdown. And if you go to interactive widgets, it's right there, scrolling frame. So you can find it either way. Um, so there you go. I'm just going to get it from here, universal scrolling frames. And I want to add a vertical scroll. You can hide the scroll um, indicator or have it appear. I think in this case, it makes sense if we leave it, but that's totally up to you. In this case, it makes sense because if a user's open, opening this, you want to automatically let them know that that is a scrolling frame. Um, if not, they might assume that the story just cuts off abruptly. So I would leave the indicator in. So if I go ahead and play that now or preview it, I should say, you can see there's the indicator, which is great. And I can scroll right through. Perfect. Now we're going to add a little bit more content up top and then we're going to publish this online and see how all the page navigation works and the scrolling frame as well. Another thing I'd like to do is copy the logo from page one and do a shift option command V to paste in place on page two. I'm going to change the color of that. 
and I want to make it the same tint. So let's do 40% or maybe 50. We'll try 50. We can always revert and change that. Let's split the difference and say 45. Perfect. Okay. I want to click on this and let's turn that into a button as well. And this will be home button. Perfect. The event will be on release or tap. The action will be go to page and the page is page one. So just leave that, but I can copy this now and paste it on every other, uh, every other page in the layout. And you can see that it updates to two. It has the same action applied. And basically this will be the home button. So if you're on, we only have five pages here, but if this was a 20 page document and you wanted to easily get back to the home page, we've just created the logo to be just that. So going back to page two now, I have some extra space up here that we can play with to add a little bit more content. I'm going to grab the line tool, hold my shift key and drag another line that goes all the way across all the columns. And let's change the stroke weight to 0 0.25. And yeah, that's fine. Maybe make it, uh, Let's make it that darker blue is fine. That's good. And basically I have some other cars here that I want to highlight. So in my libraries, I have four hatchbacks, one, two, three, and four. And I'm just gonna drop them in one at a time. And they're set up to be the width of each column. So that's good. And basically I want these to come in one at a time on page load and see how that looks. And we'll pick a preset, maybe something like that. Let's select all of them and make sure that they're aligned vertically. They're already spaced out because you can see the gutter in between. I'm going to add a little teaser headline here to this. So quick glance, the text for this, let's see if I have, um, Maybe quick glance. Yeah, I created it there. So I'm just say, okay, perfect. Quick glance, colon, our hatch back picks for 2022. Let's go ahead and maybe make that that dark blue. However, quick glance will make it red to stand out a little bit more. Perfect. Double click. Let's center it to the cars. How does that look? No, let's cinch, let's make sure that the top is aligned with the logo and we'll bring these up as well. I'm just going to nudge those up something like that. That's good. Now let's go ahead and click on the first one, go to your animation. You can see it's called hatchback four. We want this to let's do a fade in with a 0.5 second duration and Instead of repeating that same thing, let's go ahead and just select all of them and do the same thing. So fade in on page load with a 0.5 duration. Everything else looks good. So I'm going to click the play uh, button to see it in the preview window. So you can see they all appeared on page load. Let's go ahead and do that again. I'm just going to click the play button. And I'll show you how to add a little delay if you don't want them to come in so quickly when the page loads. Um, I'm gonna X that. I'm going to actually bring this up a bit here, that line, just to make sure that that's centered properly. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do actually, if I go to my timing panel, I'm gonna select all these. And let's go to timing. And you can see that they're all there. Um, so the fourth one comes in first. That's this one here, this last car. And I'm just gonna set a delay of maybe 0.5 seconds, okay? This way it gives the viewer just a little more time to see that animation rather than uh, have it play so quickly. They may miss it. So you get a 0.5 second delay and it comes in at the same pace, which is nice. I have a third page in this layout and I just want to go over how to do the scrolling frame one more time. You can see I have my article here. It's kind of the same layout as the one previous. I'm going to click on the rectangle frame tool, 
create another container and let's create it to end there. And you can see the last line of text is where you see the word frequently. And make sure that it's ending under the uh, line clean and not kind of in the halfway point. So it's cutting some text off. Try to be in between the line spacing, okay? So there's no grouping here because I didn't add a byline. So I'm just gonna click on the story, click on the article, Command X or Edit Cut. Click on the container, right click, paste into, and you can see it's contained in there. You could still adjust the frame. So if you need more space to show the indicator, just add a little bit more space to the right of it. So I'm gonna click on that and let's go to window and universal scrolling frames again. And let's turn the scrolling direction to be vertical. I wouldn't hide the indicator in this case, but personal preference, I can close that. I'm gonna to go to buttons and forms and let's preview that. You can see the indicator on the right, which means it's a scrolling frame and it scrolls just the way we intended it to. So let's go ahead now, publish this online, test out the navigation as well as the sidebar menu. Okay, as a last step, let's publish this online. So I'm gonna click on the share button in the upper right hand corner and click publish online. This is where you can publish a new document or update an existing one. The title will be the name of the document. Everything else is fine. Go ahead and click publish online. I already have one published, so I'm gonna open it in my web browser. Let's open it in full screen. Let's test out the sidebar menu first. You can see that works fine. I'll click on top five sedans or top sedans. You can see it has the top five in the scrolling frame. You also saw that the animation played out as well. If I click first gear, the logo takes me back to the home page. Let's click on Pronto Features. You can see that page loads as well with the scrolling frame and I can click back to go to the home page. I truly hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create an interactive magazine with sidebar menu functionality, scrolling frames and page navigation. Hit the like button and leave a comment if you found this lesson helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest tutorial content published every other week. Until then, take care and keep creating.